existential anxiety is something that can manifest differently in different people and that means you will recognize it differently in different people so these are my signs that you are having an existential depression or signs of existential anxiety i don't know who i am anymore i just don't you know i i i feel so lost i feel so confused Existential anxiety can be something that comes suddenly in a big burst and that is very extreme and some people can be very dramatic in their expressions of existential anxiety. We also have the super fake. Hey man, look at my abs. Do you see it? I work out. I work out so much. I'm so strong I can lift a horse. I'm so smart, I'm so intelligent, I'm smarter than any of you guys. Honestly, uh, you guys are fools. I can do everything. I am best at everything. There is nothing you can do better than me. I can do anything better than you. I always smile. I'm always happy. Everything is always great. I'm sunshines and roses. I am a person who is always full of energy. I'm always positive. You know, I'm always a winner. I'm always going to win. I'm never going to lose. There's never going to be any problems because I'm always going to be able to take care of everything. The super fake are people that try extra hard to act perfect, positive, happy in every single moment of their life. But of course, this is only something that is made extreme and dramatic because they are struggling with such crippling doubt inside. And often the stronger the doubt is inside, the stronger the facade they put out outwards. Existential anxiety can also mean feeling completely lost. So, I think I figured it out. I'm gonna be a fireman. I, I I know, I know, yesterday I said I was going to be a pilot, but, you know, I think a fireman, that's much more me, you know? So, I'm gonna quit my studies to become a political scientist, and I'm gonna go full on, I'm gonna become a fireman, I'm gonna go to the fire academy tomorrow, I'm gonna enroll, enlist, and this is what I wanna do, you know? This is what I wanna do. Uh, I just need a loan, I just need $100,000 so I can finance my transition because they're gonna have a one hour, a one year study program but yeah I just need to finance my time while that happens so uh, if you could loan that to me or something I, I really appreciate it. So I quit the fire academy. Uh, I just said it's this is not me this is not who I am you know I think I think I'm meant to do something different I think I'm meant to be a chef I think I'm meant to cook for life I don't know what I want to do anymore it's just every moment feels so pointless you know no matter what I do you know it doesn't matter you know I don't know I just don't see the point of trying anymore you know I've been reading up on different things I could study or do, but yeah, nothing. It's, I don't want to do anything. I just, I just don't have the energy. I just don't want it, you know. During existential anxiety, it might also be especially appealing to think of yourself as a little bit more special than other people. I think coming from that feeling of... Uh, you know, never being talked to in school, never being uh, selected for an activity, never getting the highest grade, you know, all those things setting up. I think those things really cause us to really yearn for feeling special, really yearn for feeling different. And that can cause us to have uh, another form of existential anxiety, snowflake syndrome. Mom, it's not a phase. I am who I am. I am God. I li like this music. These are my friends. This is who I want to do. I'm gonna be a musician. I'm gonna stand on stage. I'm gonna perform. I don't see why I have to go to high school and be like all the other sheep in school. I don't want to be like everyone else. 
But of course, there's also just pure ecomania. I don't see why I should have to conform to this pointless existence. These jobs, these, my boss is an absolute idiot, an absolute moron. Honestly, nobody in this planet, no job could fit my abilities. There is nothing out there that is suitable for somebody of my intelligence. I don't understand why I'm gonna have to. I'm supposed to have to listen to this therapist. Why he's gonna have to give me advice? Who does he think he is? Why does he think he knows better than me what I should do about my situation? Maybe he can help some people with like a normal IQ, with like an IQ of 120 or 110 or something. But somebody like me, who is this smart, it's pointless i don't see why i'm constantly forced to go here i don't understand it so if you feel that you are having existential anxiety just dial 911 and tell them that your inner sense of purpose has been kidnapped by your need of an outer sense of purpose no but seriously half the time when we struggle with existential anxiety it's because we are torn between what we think we should value because society has taught us that it is important and what we value because we value it. A lot of the time the dreams and the personal values and aspirations that we might have or might develop if we trust ourselves might feel radically different or strange or odd in comparison to what society tells us we should value or want for ourselves. So a lot of the time it's not that we are having existential anxiety, it's not that we don't know what we want, it's that we don't know how to fit what we want with what society has to offer us. A lot of the time we can feel neglected, ignored, we can feel uh, that we are understimulated, we can feel that we are like let, uh, isolated, that we don't have any friends or people that listen to us or hear us or talk to us on a level we want to be talked to. The problem with flow and maintaining flow and passion and joy in what you do is just being able to know how to express yourself and be yourself in whatever environment you happen to be in. How can you be an INFJ in a school system that doesn't support INFJs? How can you be an ESTJ in an environment or around friends that don't have the same interests or values you do? What can you do if other people tell you that your ideas or your values or your identity is somehow more pointless or less correct or less right than what other people do? How can you deal with, uh, you know, the social media culture, the Instagram culture of positivity and optimism if you're a person that sometimes has these healthy, natural draw to melancholy, to reading, to quiet, to solitude? How can you deal with constantly being told about all the parties that are happening around you if you're a person that appreciates alone time? How can you deal with when other people tell you about how happy or successful they are when you know that you're not happy or successful on the same level they are, if you don't feel that you are uh, or have reached a level of success that you feel that you want for yourself. And how do we release ourselves from our parents' expectations if our parents want something from us that we don't want from ourselves? Yes, yeah, sometimes the message can be be yourself, but not like that. I want you to be yourself, but I want you to be the self that I thought you were, not that self. Yeah, be yourself and be that self that is going to get hired by that specific employer. But most of the time it's be yourself, but only after you've become successful and after you've got that job and after you've got the, all those things that you're told to get before you can flourish. Yeah, if you look at uh, Maslowian theory, a lot of time we can only secure and reach self-realization after we have reached other things in life. We can only pursue self-realization after we have gotten uh, some kind of social approval, after we have had our physical needs met, after we have hit the level of basic success or uh, status in our society or comfort or security. 
yeah, we have so many things we need to take care of before we can actually think about our own needs, our personal needs, our spiritual needs, our needs for flow and for self-expression. So the question is, uh, do we have enough time for it on a day? Do we take enough time for it on a day? Do you sit down with yourself enough? Do you ask yourself the harder questions? Do you uh, chase your dreams or passions? Or do you constantly tell yourself you're too stressed, too overworked, too busy to have time? Existential anxiety is something so real. Anybody can experience it. Everyone will experience it. Everyone will have it. Almost everyone is suffering from it a lot of time on a weekly basis in different ways. It can be something slow and steady that's always been there a bit in this background. It can be something that is constantly very acute and very drastic and something that can make you almost desperate to uh, find a way out or to break away from a relationship or to go or make a big change in your life. It can be that thing that causes you to constantly change your hair color or to indulge in alcohol every weekend to numb your senses. So in that sense, it's something so dramatic and, you know, it all ties down to, you know, something that can eventually give you depression or can cause long term issues or health problems. Yeah, it can cause your <laughs> uh, digestion system to collapse it can cause you to buy a motorcycle it can have its own sometimes crazy displays um, but it's all a reminder of how much we need truly need flow in our lives self-expression people that we can be people with so I hope this video can be an inspiration or a wake-up call to get you thinking about what flow is to you and what it means to you and maybe that will be my next video what flow is and how I use it to type people and how I use it in personality psychology thanks everyone for watching and see you all in the next video